We can share this later with folks who aren't able to attend live. I want to welcome everyone on the call and introduce Jeff Bannister. He is the owner and sole proprietor of North Bend Consulting out of Transylvania County, Brevard. Um, I'm going to let him introduce himself more and get started with this session. We're going to be talking about business uses of AI today. Thanks for being here. Hey, uh, thanks everyone for being here. Um, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Jeff Bannister, uh, the mind behind North Bend Consulting. Um, let me get here. Okay. One more button. There we go. So my career, uh, oh, see, it's already going to start with tech stuff for me. <laughs> here we go. All right, so uh, my career has been an interesting uh, fusion of creativity and operations. Uh, it kicked off in the breathtaking trains of Southeast Alaska. There, I took on roles in coordinating search and rescue missions, overseeing communications, and acting as a public affairs officer at the Coast Guard Air Station Sitka. Uh, after my time with the Coast Guard, I was drawn to the world of academia and dived into business school, where I went to a community college like Blue Ridge uh, in Texas. Um, and uh, my hunger for knowledge persisted, and I expanded my horizons with a BFA in digital media production from the Art Institute of Dallas. With a blend of military dis uh, discipline and academic insight, I stepped into the vibrant world of CRM studios in Fort Worth as an art director. My entrepreneurial drive gave me gave birth to Charlie Foxtrot Productions, bringing a fresh wave up to a Central Texas media landscape. Uh, you know, they always say the most crucial element in comedy is, is the same as in one's career. Timing. Uh, I mean, 2008... <laughs> Certainly wasn't on my calendar, but it sure did make a memorable punchline in my career path. So pivoting in my career, I took on a role as loss prevention executive at Macy's in Temple, Texas, where I got in fights with people for curious, mostly. Um, that was fun. Uh, so after that, I ended up doing uh, consulting for independent natural food stores across the country, doing loss prevention operations and also marketing. So um, in 2021, I took over Food Matters in Brevard and Morganton as a COO. I spearheaded the transformation and operations, conducted a complete rebrand, and celebrated passing the 10 million sales mark in 2022. Along the way, I embraced freelance opportunities that added rich colors to my professional tapestry. From CBS Studios in LA, GameStop in Dallas, Sylvania in San Diego, and Red Bull in Austin. That journey full of twist turns has taken me beyond charting waters or orchestrating media projects. It's evolved into sculpting communities and guiding businesses. Now let's dive into where that path has led me. So currently, I'm immersed in initiatives resonating with my commitment to elevate businesses and communities. <clears throat> Excuse me. At North Bend Consulting, we seamlessly blend AI and human insight, elevating both small businesses and nonprofits. I also serve with pride as the board vice president for SparkPoint, a nonprofit wholeheartedly dedicated to fostering holistic community health and connections. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. I also wear the hat of a certified SCORE mentor, uh, guiding budding entrepreneurs and small businesses on the path to success. My board membership at the Brevard Transmania County Chamber of Commerce sees us relentlessly innovating in support of local ventures. In addition, I, I founded Brevard Sustainable Suburban Development. This is an advocacy group, advocacy group uh, rallying Brevard's small business owners and managers uh, to champion better middle housing options for a dedicated workforce. It's very hard to find, I'm sure you all know, it's hard to find people. And if we can't find them from Blue Ridge, then uh, we got to find a place for them to live. So uh, adding a new feather to my cap, I've recently been elected to the board of Transylvania County Schools Educational Foundation, marking yet another exhilarating chapter in my pursuit to create lasting impact. Now that you have a glimpse into my tapestry of my professional journey, I'd like to guide us into a topic close to my heart, the profound interplay between AI, neurodiversity, and my business. It's dynamic that promises to read the way we perceive and interact with the world around. So let's dive a little deeper into the interplay between generative AI, neurodiversity, and my business. So with a special lens on ADHD, a subject I hold, I hold close to heart as I was late diagnosed when I was 27 with ADHD. Uh, the synergy is transformative, and I visualize this in this Venn diagram. So on one side, you have AI, and you have, <clears throat> excuse me, automation streamlines repetitive tasks, reshaping how we work. Uh, Data-driven insights give us objective clarity aiding informed decisions. Scalability ensures growth without bounds. And object, objective decision-making helps sideline cognitive biases. On the flip side, we delve into the treasures of neurodiversity, specifically ADHD. Creative thinking offers fresh perspectives. Hyperfocus enables intense concentration on passion areas. Intuitive problem solving brings unique out-of-the-box solutions. Deep emotional resonance fosters empathetic connections. Where these worlds collide, magic unfolds. 
uh, enhance creativity as AI's data-rich landscape merges with ADHD's creative prowess. Surge in productivity with AI automation meeting ADHD's hyper-focus. Robust problem solving with each filling in is the other's gaps. Uh, adaptive growth rooted in both AI and ADHD's inherent evolutions. This confluence seemingly of contrasting realms is where the, the most profound and impactful innovations emerge. With this powerful synergy between AI and neurodiversity in mind, you might ask, how does it translate into tangible impacts on real world challenges? Let's turn into concrete scenarios that illuminate this dynamic relationship in action. So first I wanna start with what I call is catching the wave. And this is that initial inertia, that getting started on something, which is hard for a lot of people, but for neurodivergent people and ADHD specifically, it's very hard and it can be daunting. So um, <clears throat> picture an endless ocean teeming with waves, each one that I'll be beckoning you. It's not a lack of chances, but there's sheer abundance that can be paralyzed. Imagine wanting to ride a wave to the shore of success, but feeling immobilized, hesitant to even paddle forward. This paralysis stems from a whirlwind of thoughts, emotions, and sensory bombardments that render the mere act of starting an uphill battle. While some might think, just paddle, what's holding you back? For a neurodivergent, this inertia often feels like an insurmountable wall. Enter AI-driven solutions like ChatGPT, which personally, which I personally use to tackle this challenge. Here are three transformative ways it supports me. You can see the video on the screen here is actually, um, I simply put in that I have a client and put some details in there and started asking for a breakdown. And it's giving me an entire outline. It might not be what I use. It definitely won't be exactly what I use, but it gives me some structure to start with. So um, some of the main parts that I start to do to get this initial inertia passed is brainstorming. Um, when I talk to somebody about ChatGPT and they've never used it, my first thing is tell them is just try brainstorming with it. Give it an idea and start working back and forth. The cool thing is this is true brainstorming. No one scoffs at any wild idea. They all go with it. It's yes and every time. Um, it's very, very interesting to go down some rabbit holes and see what you can come up with. Uh, project structuring. So again, this is for me, I can't really even start on a project till I fully understand it and have a grasp of it. So by taking a huge amount of information and asking AI to just break it out into an outline is miles of work that would take me so much time and probably stop me from really getting started on a lot of things. And then also uh, initial research. So I, if I don't know where to go, I've got, a, a, I've got a goal, but I don't know how to get there or what I've got. Um, I can start doing some initial research. And now that ChatGPT has a web browsing capability, I can actually point it to a website I want to search or let it see what it finds and go back. Um, I also always ask it to cite sources and I go back and check those. So this, this training of these threads to do what you want is, is really the key here. You can, anyone can go in here and ask for an essay and you'll get one. It'll be plagiarized and it won't be right. And the citations will probably be wrong. But if you spend the time to actually work with this and to make it work for you, you can really do some amazing things. So now we go into uh, the waiting game just time management, which is uh, executive function problem number one, probably with most people, neurodivergent people. So um, while universally challenging, this takes on a unique dimension within the ADHD realm. Deadline dependency. So procrastination might be a fam familiar foe for many, but within ADHD, the pressing anxiety of an impending deadline becomes an overwhelming motivator, sometimes to a paralyzing degree. To counteract this, I've implemented what I call accountability checks inside of chat GPT threads. I train the thread that every few hours, depending on the project, the interval, that it will check on me and see what my goal is, see where I'm at on that goal, percentage done, and give me some motivators to keep going. What this does is it doesn't make me wait for the last minute deadline to get all these things done, which can be the case. Um, time paralysis. Now, so this is today at two o'clock, I have this call. Um, I am sometimes enabled, un completely unable to do anything else until two o'clock. Uh, it really is terrible. Um, and it's tough to get uh, projects done when you have afternoon meetings and you can't do anything beforehand. So um, what I do here is I ask, I ask ChatGPT to break down projects for me and really break them down into, into easy to digest chunks. And if I have an hour to do work, I'll say, hey, what in this project can we complete in an hour? And it'll spit out some options for me. And then I can feel like I've finished something, I've made a checkpoint and I've got something. So by harnessing AI tools tailored to ADHD unique challenges, we're not just coping, we're crafting smarter strategies for both academic and professional programs. So the turning point. So now we've arrived at this 
pivotal revelation in our journey today. This very presentation, everything I've done for this has completely used ChatGPT. And uh, as my editor, as my brainstormer, as my just a structure bouncing things off, what you're seeing in this video here is just one of probably about four or five different threads I use for just this project. And you can see the amount of work to get a 30 minute presentation the way I want it, it is extensive. There's a lot to it. It's not just a plug and play and say, do this and it does it. Um, and, and I wouldn't want it that way. Um, and I don't think that that's the future of this is just to say, do it and it gives you, you give it admission and it does it. Like the process is where this helps. So, <clears throat> excuse me. The AI tool has not only been a topic of discussion, but has also been an active participant in creating our narr narrative today. It's a testament of how AI, especially when aligned with neurodiversity, can not only complement our efforts, but also elevate them. By embracing such tools, we're not just adapted, adapting, we're innovating and forging new paths in the way we communicate, collaborate, and create. Let's see here, now we will go into some of the actual techniques I use, okay? So here's just some real powerful techniques that you can use right now. And in, in almost all of this is in the free version. I do use the 4.0, the, the plus version, which is 20 bucks a month. And it has a lot more web connectivity and stuff like that. But a lot of stuff you could do in, in Bard or ChatGPT, these, are, these works. So the first thing is what I call uh, thread training. So what this is, is uh, an AI thread. It, if you haven't used it at all, um, it's like a chat thread back and forth, like text messages back and forth. But what I do is I go in and I train this thread on who I am, what I do, my writing. I'll upload a bunch of writing, develop a brand writing voice, uh, work through all that, refine and define that. And then I will ask ChatGPT to create a priming prompt for me for any new thread and say, this is how I want all my threads to sound and feel. And then I can take that prime, save it off in a Word document or whatever, copy and paste it into a new thread and be ready to go. Um, and constantly harness, you know, a starting point. You can change from there and tweak, but you have a starting point of that. Now with ChatGPT, they have what's called custom instructions, and you can load in for all of your chats, that kind of stuff. So this is exactly what I did is I, I took that brand writing voice, and then I said, hey, we have 1,500 characters. Compress that into 1,500 characters while keeping as much description and instruction as possible and create me a custom instruction. So it did, and that's what I use. So all my threads are pre-trained to know who I am, what my mission is, what my morals are, what I care about, what I think is important, um, the use, what jargon I wanna use and not use, all those type of things are done before I even jump into a new thread, okay? So that really is the difference between just asking for something and training a thread to get what you actually need and work with you. So retargeting is, I think, honestly, when I talk to people, this might be the most powerful piece of chat GPT and all large language model neural networks is retargeting. So you, you can create a document, have a summary and an analysis and an output and actions. You can have all that information. And then you can say, you know what, Kit, um, I don't have much uh, financial you know, uh, experience. Can you rewrite that in a way that I can understand it in layman's terms? And it'll do that. Uh, and that could be for any audience that you can think of. It's just about being creative and thinking how to use it. So, for example, I took um, Apple's Q3 earnings report and uploaded that. Big report, lots of numbers, lots of millions and millions of dollars. It gave me a general summary, a very high level general summary that was very financially based and jargon and lots of terms and stuff. And I said, okay, well, recreate that for someone with no financial experience. So I recreated it. Lehman's terms, explained it, simplified. Then I said, okay. Can you now create that for a middle school student? And I was really curious what was going to pop out of that. But what it does, and I've done this multiple times, and it always goes this route, is it starts explaining it by using lemonade stands. So it breaks it down from million dollars to like tens and twenties of dollars for you know for for use, and then it just explains it in lemonade stands. Like how how powerful could that be if you had uh, a syllabus and you wanted to get to the same place and you could retarget that for each and every one of your students' needs? in seconds. And the same information is there. It's just formatted differently or use different words or different jargon. So that to me is, is super powerful for a lot of things, not only for like optimization and like, uh, and getting more stuff done, but just to be able to do all these different targets and hit that was a situation. Um, Role-playing personas. So what this is, is that along with uh, training a, fed, a thread generally, you can just say, act as, this person or this role or this thing. So 
uh, you can say like, uh, okay, in this moment, I need, you are Steve Jobs, and I want you to critique my business plan and give me, and it will, it knows now that who you're, how you're talking to it and what role you want it to play back to you. And you'll get much more defined answers there. Hey, um, Jack, real quick, yeah. this is Sarah. Um, we're still seeing the AI streamlines the machine slide. I just want to make sure that's where we should be sitting. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah, I just yeah, want to make yeah. sure. Just checking. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, no problem. There we go. Yeah. There you go. Perfect. All right. So role-playing personas, uh, we got to that. Uh, AI tool synergy. So this is where I use different AIs off of each other. So um, uh, there's a new feature now that can um, see pictures. So you can upload a picture. So I will upload a picture and have it describe that picture. It can describe that picture beautifully. And I say, okay, now create that into a text to image prompt for Dolly or Firefly or one of these other text to image generators. And it will create that perfectly. And then I pop that in and get the image I want. So this is like, you can do so many things to use against each other. And then also like, you can use one thread that has a certain uh, capability and use it to another thread. So uh, you can really get some really powerful back and forth and work against each other to get some amazing results. Uh, so create a marketing target persona. Now this sounds very specific to like marketing, but anyone who's worked in marketing knows that this is much easier to try to speak to someone in an entire demographic. So usually what we do is we come up with a target persona. This is a person with a name and age. They have, uh, you know, and I'll show you here, we've got an example. So um, literally all I put in for this prompt was, uh, can you create for me a marketing persona as an example I can use? Let's say our target market is retired boomers with multiple homes across the country. Who, who we want to shop in our grocery store. And this is what we popped out. So it might be a little harder here, but I'll kind of break it down. But you got, it gives you a name, gives you an age, background, where they were raised. Uh, it gives you, they're married to three adult children, seven grandchildren. It just creates this whole person and all this detail, even down to like, <clears throat> excuse me, even down to prefer shopping in stores that cater to her life's taste and lifestyle. Uh, responses to email campaigns, especially to those personalized recommendations or discounts, uh, is a regular promotion for uh, loyalty program members. So you can have all this thing. And so when you're talking to someone, whether it be marketing or communications in any way, you're talking to a person for that demographic. So it's very powerful. I usually create for someone, I usually create two or three of those. And when I tell them when they're doing anything for marketing, they're always talking to Jet Setting Jane or whoever it might be. That's who you're talking to to reach that. Um, another powerful tool is what I call Refresher. So going into a huge project that I've worked on for weeks, months, I've worked on other projects, I'm obviously very spread out between a lot of different projects. I can come back and go, where are we in this project? What do we have left to do? And and how much time do we have? All that kind of things. And I can get right up to speed in minutes instead of possibly spending half a day just getting back up to speed to start working on the project. So that's very powerful. Um, scheduling. I mean, the amount of this is just, it's crazy how much you can do with this. Is you can. It will estimate time per project. It will break down. You can ask priorities. It will reprioritize. You can have an entire thread of to do. I have a to do, like a home to do list. And every day I just go, I, and I just talk to it and say, you can do this, this, and this. Add, add, I got a vacuum. I got to do this. And it'll keep this running list and keep reprioritizing depending on where you're at today. Um, and then obviously summarizing. It's like this is an everyday thing. Like I get lots of emails, long emails, tons of information. And with ADHD, sometimes it's hard to, coherently get through all that and retain it. So I can put that into chat GPT and have it export out an outline, a breakdown of what I need to do, what the ask is, and what I need to do to make that ask work. So these are just some of like everyday tools that I'm using uh, for all my clients and for my personal life as well. <clears throat> so um, 30 minutes goes by really fast. We can try to get all this in, right? Um, <laughs> I talk fast. I'm trying to slow down, but I still have to get all this in. So our rapidly evolving landscape, AI emerges not just as a tool, but as a transformative game changer. For individuals on the neurodivergent spectrum, especially those with ADHD, navigating, navigating academia and the professional world presents its own set of unique challenges. These range from time management hurdles to overwhelming sensation of facing large tasks. Enter AI solutions. These tools aren't just about automation or data processing. They act as a co-pilot, guiding, assisting, and elevating our efforts. They help dissect large tasks in manageable chunks and offer timely nudges and provide data-driven insights, all tailored to individual needs. But the beauty of AI is in its versatility. It's not just for big projects or academic pursuits, everyday tasks from managing schedules 
to brainstorming creative ideas can be enhanced with AI. By integrating these tools in our daily routines, we're not just adapting to the future, we're actively shaping it, ensuring that everyone, regardless of neurological makeup, can harness the power of AI to its fullest potential. Uh, before we conclude, I'd like to share a, a personal tale about AI myself. So um, it's a testament to AI's transformative power. Um, just a few months ago, the gravity of life uh, weighed heavily on me when my father was hospitalized in a serious condition. Confronted by the stark reality of potentially losing him, I felt a pressing need to put into words the indelible mark he made in my life, the invaluable lessons he imparted, and the depth of my love and gratitude for all he had done for me and my brothers. Guided by AI, I, uh, I penned an essay uh, that talked about what I learned from him and what he meant to me and uh, how he made me who I am and how much I loved him, um, which is hard to do in our family. It's just very repressed. <laughs> um, he got to read that. Uh, he rallied from that. He got to read that. Um, and I knew he knew how I felt. And I knew that he read that. But life had another twist in store. And uh, 16 days ago, uh, I lost my friend. Um, excuse me. Amid the grief, I found solace in a closed loop of mutual understanding and appreciation. It was a beacon of comfort in those bleak moments, knowing he had read my tribute that he knew. And at the heart of this deeply personal experience was AI, an unexpected guiding light, helping me articulate and share my emotions during life's most vulnerable moments. It's not just a professional tool, but a lifeline, offering clarity and closure when it's needed most. Um, I know we're a little bit early. I didn't want to go too long, but I, I trust that today has provided you with a window in the world of neurodiversity, illuminated the vast capabilities of AI and showcased how AI can seamlessly integrate into both our professional and personal journeys. More than a tool, AI can profoundly touch our lives in ways we might never anticipate. Uh, and uh, I, 30 minutes is not enough time to get into all this. I, I hope that um, some of you can come to November 1st. We'll be having a, an hour long. Uh, in person at TCC, and then broadcasting that as well. Is that right, Sarah? That's correct. And actually, I think we're just on time because we have time if people want to ask you more yeah. specific questions or kind of like learn, dig in a little bit more to some of the ways that you use these tools with your clients. I think this is a great opportunity for some, maybe some starts of conversations that can continue Definitely. to give you some things to think about for November. So let's open it up. What do you? What else do you want to know from Jeff? First of all, thank you. Thank you so much for sharing um, your story. Yeah. Um, both your both your story as a neurodivergent individual, but also as a business owner and a successful business owner, and your deeply personal experience recently with the loss of your father. We just we, that means a lot to us as a community that you're willing to share that with us. And um, thank you. Yeah. Now, if any of you want to learn more from Jeff, please go ahead and take yourself off mute or throw questions in the chat, and we can have some discussion as we wrap up today. Everyone knows it. Yeah, yeah I'll yeah. start. Uh, this okay. is Amy from nursing. Uh, yeah. So is there like a, um, is it a safe space for us to get into if we want to just play around and explore the capabilities of chat? Yeah, 100%. So uh, Bard and ChatGPT uh, have free versions um, and you can play around with them. Uh, the one thing I will tell you is that uh, anything you put in there is out in the ether. So you don't want to put in personal information or security or any that kind of stuff, right? Um, the fact that somebody finding that would be difficult, but still, that's not it, that's not what you want to do on there. What will be happening soon is that they will make they'll be making uh, enclosed versions that a um, you know a hospital could have, and it will be tr it will be trained with just the stuff they need. It will be closed behind a firewall, and then that really gives you the full tools. But to get in and play with it, like just go into ChatGPT um, and uh, and ask some questions. Like brainstorming, I always tell people try brainstorming. Like it it will be incredible what it comes out with, um, and every day it gets a little better. Hey, Jeff, uh, this is Jamie Warren. Um, I, I wondered if you could share a little bit of insight about how um, to continue to craft. Um, I find that, you know, conversing with Chad GBT is, 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 was similar to me learning how to Google something. You know, mm -hmm. There's definitely a technique involved. Yes. And I'm trying to sort of figure out what that next step is for me. So um, could you share a little insight about that? Yeah. And, and I will tell you, too, that um, here's the crazy thing about Chad GBT is when you're in there, and you want to do something and you're not sure, ask it, hey, I, how, how can I make these prompts better? How could I, you know, honestly, that's how I kind of learned how to do this trial and error and that. 
But what I found is that um, you're having a conversation. It, it, this is how we're going to communicate with computers moving forward, I think, is that this will be the uh, this conversational. Um, and ChatGPT just yesterday, I updated my my app on my phone, where now you talk back and forth with a voice if you want to. Um, but what you, what you want to do is just have a conversation. And you have to get out of the, the mind frame of Googling terms and Googling in context. So um, what that means is like, if, if you don't just put in uh, Showtime's movie, whatever, right? You would want to do, hey, I'm looking for a movie uh, that has this and uh, you know I live here, uh, what's going on right now? So if you think of it more like talking to a partner uh, or a friend, I find much better uh, outputs. And something really interesting with that, and this has definitely uh, not been scientifically tested, but multiple times I've tried this on different threads, is if I am nicer and more collegiate to the AI, I get better responses and better formatted responses, interestingly enough. So uh, I'm that much of a people pleaser that I'm even nice to the chat GPT, but it does seem to uh, respond in some ways and be better. So uh, what I would say for making them better is just keep, working at it. And when you put in something and it's not the answer you want, say, well, that's not exactly what I wanted. Now I'm looking for this. And then you'll start to feel those those prompts being built as you go. So you don't have to worry about making the perfect prompt the first time. Because you can go back and go, that's not exactly what I wanted. And you've already got a starting point. So I would say just on a thread, just keep working that prompt until you get the response you're looking for instead of starting over again. You know, Does that answer your question at all? It does. Thank you. Yeah. And I, I had a question, Jeff. So, um, I'm in. I'm, my name is Steve. Is I, I'm in IT, and I've been using yeah. ChatGPT and various things for a while. But, um, you know, how do you see? You know, the, I guess when you're thinking about brainstorming, I mean, how how do you feel about you know the AI guiding versus you know your own thoughts? Do you feel like even even though you're asking the AI first? that you still, you know, you, you know, you're still going to be able to spontaneously come up with some things or I don't know how you think about that. Yeah. You know, I, I, I think about that sometimes like who's leading who at times. Um, but I, I definitely noticed that it is a yes and machine, right? So if, if you put in a terrible idea in there, it will go, okay, but we could, you know, but um, yeah, it, it seems, it, it definitely seems that without a, a driver, the thing could run right? It could do stuff. But what it would do is, it, it, I mean, it wouldn't be what you wanted for sure. And it wouldn't get to be anything other than it would never feel human. Um, my, my, when I work through things, it is, um, I honestly put more work into getting a project out inside ChatGPT. instead of if I was just going to write something, it'd probably take me a lot less time. Um, but I find that um, I definitely feel like I'm steering that a hundred percent. And there's times where I will, the only time I I don't want it to do that is I will say, hey, you are you are an accountant. I want you to critique. I want you to critique my business plan or whatever it is. And it will come back with things that you know, are more of a critique and more of a push me in a direction based on the knowledge. It is. Um, and, you know, like I, I'm building this plan as I go to. Uh, so I, I think that as these changes and advancements come, I'm always uh, cognizant of that. And that's really where I'm at right now is just to be cognizant of it and kind of feel where that is. Um, I think that it's very easy if you if you look at somebody that it just generates something from ChatGPT from a single prompt and somebody who works through it like an editor, the the difference is night and day. And I think that it's easy to see that once you get into the program. So the more everyone's in it and sees it, the more uh, clarification for everyone that everyone will see through that if it's just completely it's it's you know it's it's a chatbot, you know, instead of a, a working person. Uh, and somebody asked about if I've named my chat GPT. I've actually asked it what it wants to be called multiple occasions. And it comes up with usually an acronym of what it does. Uh, it does always say, well, I'm not a person. I'm like, oh, I get that. I just want to call you something. You're my teammate. I want to call you something. So it does It does get to the point where it'll come up with a name and try to call it something. Well, Jeff, the takeaway that I'm getting from today's session is that we're not going to really be able to use this tool well until we start using it. And that by continued use and getting more familiar with its capabilities, we're going to build the strength of the tool overall and AI overall. So uh, we really appreciate you sharing some of the ways that you're already using it. And again, just thank you so much for your openness. Um, yeah, you're clearly on the front edge of this. 
I hope that you can join me uh, and Steve for our next session. We're going to be uh, hosting a session on October 26th with Kevin Qualvik, who's on the call right now. And uh, he's going to be talking about faculty efficiencies. And then, as, J as Jeff mentioned, he's going to be back with us in person on November 1st for a session uh, that we'll have streamed on both the TCC and the HCC campuses. He'll be at TCC for that one. Thanks so much for being on the call. Uh, and yeah. thank you, Jeff, again, for your time with us today. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Take care. Bye-bye. Right. Uh,